In this demonstration, we're going to show the application of the Cordis business operations platform in the retail banking sector. Feather Credit is an online bank who provide credit and credit card services to consumers. Feather Credit have used the Cordis business operations platform to create their new credit card process. Let's have a look at that process within the Cordis platform. What we're looking at here is a screenshot of the process design from the Cordis Business Operations platform. And as we can see over on the left, the input to the process is a customer filling in a form online requesting a new credit card. The first thing that happens in the process is the request is created in the backend banking systems. And then we move into processing of that credit request. The first things that happens is an external web service call to get a credit score for that person. Once we have a numeric credit score, we pass that through a decision table where a number of rules decide whether that credit is low risk, medium risk, or high risk. If low risk, we start a sub process from within this main process to automatically approve the card. If the result is high risk, then we start an automatic process to reject the card application. However, if medium risk, we move into a credit analysis phase where people uh, from the bank get involved to analyze the credit request and decide whether or not the customer should receive their credit card. At any point during this process, the user can cancel by using the cancellation subprocess. If we drill down into the credit analysis phase, what we see is a case model which has a number of states. We start at the top and the credit validation phase is simply displaying some data to a user for them to decide that this credit application is a valid one. Once this is complete, we move to a role of credit manager and the credit manager looks at more detailed information around this application and can, if they choose, perform a number of follow-up actions, for example, contacting the customer contacting a credit reference agency, or maybe obtaining an opinion of somebody else within the bank. In addition, they could pass the case to another state, and indeed a sub-case, which is the fraud investigation case, allowing fraud and legal teams to get involved in the application for this card. Once all of this has happened, the credit manager has the ability to approve the application, in which case we move to the approved state, and run the relevant sub-processes to provision the card to the customer, or we go to the reject state whereby we run the sub-processes for rejection. So let's get into the demonstration. The first thing we're going to do is, from the Feather Credit portal, log in as an existing customer of the bank. Customer we're going to log in as is Matt. And once authenticated to the bank's portal, the first thing we see is a form which allows us to fill in a request for a, an additional credit card. We input our monthly income, the credit amount we're after, our mortgage amount, some notes if appropriate, and we could also attach photographic ID, proof of address, or any other documents requested by the bank. The values put into this form are those that are fed into the credit reference rules to give us a credit score, which then decide whether the application is automatically approved, automatically rejected, or has to go for manual credit approval. Upon submission of this form, we start the process and we're notified that the request is registered in the backend system. Additional ability I have here as a customer, I can look at the history of previous requests which I've made through the bank, I can also look at the contact details the bank hold for me and, if appropriate, edit any details that may be incorrect. Once the customer has made the request, the request is routed to an employee in the credit agent role inside the bank. So let's log in as an employee of the bank. I'm going to log in as Charlotte. And when Charlotte logs in, we're presented with the employee inbox or task inbox of the Cordis platform and what we can see on the left hand side is Charlotte is a member of in this case two roles the role we're interested in is credit agent 
And we can see in the credit agent role, there are currently three tasks outstanding. The top one being the task for the request from the customer that we just created. There's a number of task management features built in to the inbox. Uh, I can claim a task myself. I could assign the task to somebody else. I can delegate, I can recalendar tasks, uh, I can set timeouts, reminders, add attachments, etc. What we're going to do is claim the task and start it. And then when we open up this task, we'll see some information relating to this customer's request for a credit card. What we're seeing here is some information from the customer's request. Uh, we can see that the details of the request in the top left hand side. We see the result of the credit score, which came back from the external web service. Uh, we see some information over on the right, the customer details, which have come from our back end banking systems. And we see the request history of this particular customer. And at the moment, we are simply at the validation step for this request. So I have two options. I can validate the request or reject it. So let's go ahead and validate the request. And we can see in the top right hand corner, the request has been sent to the manager and therefore this stage of the application process is complete. If we refer back to the case model at this point, we can see that we have just performed the credit validation step whilst logged in as Charlotte in the role of credit agent. And now the task has moved on to the credit manager analysis phase. So the next thing we need to do is log in as a credit manager and analyze the credit request. But also we will see we have the ability to perform the follow up actions manually as discussed before. Once that's done, we could pass the case to the fraud investigation team and indeed they could pass it on to a legal team and then pass that back to us. We'll skip that step in this demonstration uh, purely for time's sake. Once the, credit manager is, once the credit manager is happy with the analysis phase and they wish to reject or approve, then we go on to either the rejection or in this case the approval step whereby the customer will receive an email and we will go through the approval process and get the card provisioned. So let's switch back to the portal. And we're going to log in this time as Eric who is in the credit manager role. And again, we will see the Cordis inbox. This time we'll see on the left hand side that Eric is in the manager credit processing role. And if we click on this role, then what we'll see is a single request in this case, which is in this manager's queue. And we can select this request, assign it and open it up for us to take a look. First thing to notice about this form is we have slightly different information this time as presented to the credit manager. We still have details of the request, details of the customer. This time we have some transaction history from one of the backend banking systems. And on the right hand side, we can see a list of those follow up actions as discussed previously. Now, given the information I have to hand as a credit manager, I can choose whether or not to execute these follow up actions or ignore them and continue on with the process. In addition to this, as previously mentioned, we have three other actions. We can initiate fraud investigation, which will start the sub case from within this case model, sending a task to fraud who can then do some investigation and return it to Eric as the credit manager. Or I can approve this credit request or reject this credit request. What we're going to do in this case is approve the credit request and we can see the request has been approved and what happens now is this will be closed and move on to the next stage in the process. The next thing that happens in our credit card application process is the customer, Matt in this case, receives a formatted email letting him know of the pending approval for his credit card. So let's sign into Matt's Gmail account. And what we'll see is an email from Feather Credit. If we open that up, we can see we have here a formatted email with some details from the application, some standard text, and in this case, a URL we can click on to take us to another part of the Cordis application, which will allow us to choose our card and also any insurance and any other deals we want. We're actually going to choose that from a mobile device. So let's switch over to Matt's iPhone 
And if we hit that URL on the iPhone, what we'll see initially is a login. So we can log in as Matt. And once authenticated, we'll see the Feather Credit mobile application, which gives us some information about the fact that our, our application has been approved. We can look at the various cards on offer from this organization and choose one of them. In this case, we'll take Barclay Platinum. We can look at any insurance we might want to take out with our card. In this case, we'll take Sleep Well Cover. And finally, we can arrange an appointment to talk to or to meet the bank to go and pick up our card. So we're going to choose uh, Talk Now. And that will initiate a phone conversation between ourselves and the bank. And we can then arrange to go and pick up the card. In addition, clicking Talk Now also continues the process back on the Cordish server inside the bank. And we have a final task for the final approval to take place. Back inside the Feather Credit organization is where the final approval takes place. And we're going to log back into our application as somebody with the authority to do that approval. Once we log in as Harry, we'll see, as before, the Cordis inbox and a task that has been delivered to a particular role. In this case, it is the work list role. And what we'll see is a simple task saying approve product selection. What we'll do is we'll claim this task, start it and open it up as before. And when the task is open, we'll see some very simple information in this case, the credit card that we chose while logged in as Matt out on the internet through our mobile device, and also the insurance cover that we chose. The task I have to perform here as Harry is to simply approve. And what we'll see then is if I refresh the inbox, the approval task disappears. What we see in its place is a task for final confirmation. The reason for this is this particular approval requires two stages, or what we call four eyes. Now, with the four eyes principle, although this new confirmation, this final second stage of confirmation, has gone to the same work list and therefore is visible by the same person, if I attempt to open this task, I'm notified that I don't have the privilege to do that. This is because of the four eyes principle in Cordis, which stops two people or one person within a role approving two separate approvals. Therefore, in order to actually approve this, we need to log out and log back in with somebody who is in the same role, but clearly not the same person. To do that, we're going to log in as John. And when John logs in, again, we're defaulted to the inbox view. We can change to view the same task within the same role but this time we will be able to open it. The final confirmation. And once we open this task, we'll see again some simple information about the card. In this case, again, the credit card we chose, the insurance we chose, but I am now able to approve this task. And if I refresh the inbox one more time, we'll see the task is now gone and the card has been finally approved. The very final stage of this credit card process is a notification that is delivered to the customer, in this case Matt. So back in Matt's email here, we can see we now have a new email, again formatted based upon a template delivered from the Cordis platform within Feather Credit. And it tells me now I've now been approved. This is the card type that I've been approved and the insurance. In addition, we've generated a PDF letter, which I can view. And we can see, as per the email, we have a formatted PDF, in this case, that has been injected with data from the back-end banking system, also data from the process, and data about the card and cover that I chose. In the final part of this demonstration, we're going to show some of the business activity monitoring features of the Cordis platform, and specifically monitoring around the credit card application process that we've just been looking at. In this situation, we're going to log in as another employee, Balaji. And once logged in, we'll see Balaji goes directly to a dashboard displaying data, in this case, about the teams that work within the credit card processing function within the Feather Credit Bank. 
Here we can see some business activity monitoring information. We can see in the last one month, there is a average response time graphic for a particular team, in this case, the US fraud investigation team. And we can see very quickly that this is out of current SLA. The idea of business activity monitoring dashboards within the Cordis platform are they are not a, they are not only informative but also actionable. So from within this dashboard, I could choose, for example, to escalate this SLA. I could alert the team, which may send an email or an SMS to members of the team, or I could seek help by passing a task to another member of staff. If we scroll down, we can see the load, request load over the last month, and it's very clear to see from this information that the load has gone up by quite a large amount in the last month, and therefore the response time has gone down, and that's what's put us out of SLA. It's with information like this taken directly from both the process that's going on, but also the data within the process that allows us to very quickly build business dashboards which are actionable and provide information to the right people at the right time. If we move one level further up within the organization and log in as Dominic, then we will see not only the graphics relating to the performance of a single team, but the graphics relating to the performance of multiple teams. In this case, we can see the same information as before, the US team being out of SLA. However, I can now select to look at other teams around the world. And if I look, for example, at the Asia Pac team, we can see that they are well within SLA for processing time of applications. The value of being able to see the workload of the differing teams means I can distribute that workload when certain things go out of SLA. As we've seen, the US team is struggling at the moment due to the increase in demand, and there is capacity within the Asia Pac team. So with some simple rules, I can manually distribute work between those two teams. Let's, for example, take 30% and move it from the US to the Asia Pac team. And what happens now are the tasks, some of the tasks are redistributed to uh, a different team, and that will level out the SLAs across the multiple teams. In addition to manually distributing the work, if we look over on the right hand side, we can see a graphic at the top which shows the breakup of the various applications by risk type. And if I click on this, the graphic at the bottom will show based upon that type of risk, how many of those applications either went on to be approved, are currently in process or have been rejected. What this will allow me to do is see I'm getting many, many medium risk applications which are then going on to be approved and very few medium risk applications go on to be rejected. What I may choose to do as a result of this business intelligence is go on and modify the rules which govern when an application is either high, medium or low risk and therefore placing less work on the people which are managing the medium risk applications. As we've seen throughout this demonstration, the right information is given to the right people in the right role at the right time in order to do their job. And what we've seen is a application for a credit card from initial customer interaction with a portal type interface through the workflow and task management of the approval process for that credit card, interaction through a mobile device for the choosing of the card, and wrapped up around that is the business intelligence that the business users within the organization need to make the correct decisions in order to make the business function properly.